So they'll be calling you a radical as Megan Rice has passed away. So it's a big story and how, I mean, I like cancer culture. Fuck. <laughs> it's like Lindsay Mills, if she's a fucking performance artist, what is Kevin Lynch? This gives me a chance to really talk about the anti-nuclear movement, the peace movement. Where do we go from here? As Megan has passed away at 91, she was very active. I always go back, that's why I got this hat on. Her mom. She was the greatest. You try to even Google and find out anything about Madeline Rice. Now, you can't even find it. That's how they've scrubbed the internet. They've scrubbed the peace movement. They've scrammed the anti-nuclear movement post-Fukushima. Of course, we're going to be out of vogue. Of course, we're going to be persecuted. Of course, we're going to live in poverty. That's what all, of course, all real true grassroots activists are going to get no credit. You go back to Occupy, with Kevin Blanche was so paramount in the forming of Occupy. Remember, I called it the post Aaron's Project. We were leading up right there where Madeline Rice and Megan Rice were born and raised. The shirt waist fire. So much the Catholic workers right, Dorothy. Shirt waist fire. Shirt waist fire. I was leading up for the 100th anniversary. That's We had a package. We had it put together. We had anonymous. We had everybody who was anybody working it. We were ready. March 25th, 2011, the 100th anniversary. Something happened on the way to that place. Two weeks earlier, meltdowns at Fukushima, Japan. I went all in. I was already all in. I know, at the top of the heap. Right there, where she was born and raised. Right there, in front of the chemistry building at NYU, where Madeline Rice used to stand with her megahorn with her hat. Right there, where Megan Rice's father was the professor at NYU. Try Google and find anything about Dr. Rice and Dr. Rice. Try it. You know my take and my thesis on Fukushima and the pandemic. I don't call it what they call it. And again, you can deny my work, then you deny Albert Einstein's work. By the way, I got the goods. We'll talk about this. We have to do this from within. I do not you deny his work. A mutation from these meltdowns. Is that what got Megan? I don't know, but I'll find out. She was very active. Her mother was active. I think her mom died in 97. I listened to her mom speak in her 90s. And she was like she was 30. Boom, 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 boom. You know I disagree with the plowshares tactics. I, where their mind is, anti-nuker, anti-nuker, and you know I fight with them and I've argued with them for decades, including Megan, her and I have had this discussion multiple times about, because they will say, oh, we're okay with the technology, but we're not with the bomb. And I'm like, no, which came first? And, I've, and I will quote, at the Megan Rice potluck, at sentencing, at the trial, Sister Snow, it's a hierarchy through the nuns. Okay, well, Lynch, you said us right. I says, well, how can you accept this technology? This technology is the bomb. Y-12 is the bomb. The byproduct from nuclear waste is the bomb. From nuclear energy reactors. No. You said us straight. There's no doubt in my mind you were sent by God. Amen. I knew Madeline Rice very well as a young activist. Very young activist. I was involved in this peace movement from the day freaking <laughs> from Vietnam. As a little boy. Watch him load my father in a body bag and kill him. I come from a very, very patriotic family. My uncle Omaha Beach, D-Day, one of the most decorated men in the freaking history of freaking that nightmare. Whoa, whoa. He and I together every single day, Harold. My dad, nuked to death, drafted Marine. My uncle Claude, his funeral Saturday. <laughs> you don't know decorated. All anti-nukers, all anti-nukers, all peace activists, all peace activists. Anybody who was in Iraq, Afghanistan, Vietnam, <laughs> Omaha Beach, D-Day, 
in the trenches, they become peace activists. You can go to jail. Okay. In the old days, maybe that was a way to make your statement. You get no media press cover anymore. Y-12. That place is so creepy. The bomb. The reactor. I was listening to... I was very upset last night when I found out she had died. This is how we change it. This is how we do it. How do you get the goods, Kevin? From within side. From within. It's like the police brutality movement. And if you don't think Occupy and the Million Mass March changed the world, you know nothing. The Million Mass March was the conception of Black Lives Matters. Black Lives Matters, of course, is corporatized and hoard out and stole. That's what they do! But we got our lightning out of the bottle. It's seven million people. Of course we get no freaking. Who invented the Million Mass March? Kevin Blanche and John Anthony Fairhurst did. The Post-Ignorance Project. That's where this all started. You know, we go clear back anonymous in Aaron Swartz. Clear back then in New York, right there at Washington Square. Kevin Blanche holding up my post-ignorance sign. We organized. <laughs> I think this should be a wake-up call to plowshares. Do I support plowshares or do I support plowshares? Which one? You know, the breaking into different facilities and making your statement... Okay. Going to prison? There's other ways to make your statement. Me and Megan talked about this. Their minds are in the right place. They're all in the right place. But this is so much more dynamic. You can't just say, okay, it's like Police brutality has to change from within. Culture has to change. In the great words of Madeline Rice, Dr. Rice at NYU, at the chemistry building, lock those girls in. Either jump or burn. That's his old classroom. Her dad. Her mom at Columbia. If you're going to be anti-nuclear, how can you support these nuclear energy reactors and Price Anderson? We have to kill Price Anderson. That's the Congressional Act. It's like Columbus Day yesterday. What's your name? It calls him a genocidal maniac. Let me show you something. And people, Fox News, run right out of the house in Windsor, goes off our, on calling a general... A genocidal maniac, a genocidal maniac, because that's exactly what he is. But you know, I stand out here and I do this all the time. We got some snow on the mighty fucking Wasatch this morning. Thomas Hart Benton, the senator, standing on May 10th, 1869, right behind my house, Promontory, Utah. I envision someday a statue of Christopher Columbus standing on the highest Rocky Mountain peak. He's pointing right there at the mighty Mount Ogden. Pass out the smallpox blankets. Cut down the totem poles. Where do we go? It doesn't matter if I get 112 fucking views or 28 views. Contemporary fucking masses are going to do nothing. Rubbing sticks. Oh, yeah. I go back to my long, long activist career. My activism career started as a little boy. When I watched my dad have massive fucking seizures coming home from fucking wherever the hell they had him. The drafted Marine. Uncle Claude. The CIA. Fucking Special Forces. Fucking advisor in Vietnam. Me and my Uncle Harold on that fucking little farm, pig farm, me and him together every single night doing the work feeding the baby animals.
This dy this fight is dynamic. If you're gonna be a peace activist, you, you have to be anti-nuclear energy. It's imperialism. It's control. It's wealth. It's power. These are power fucking thirsty, hungry, sick, demented fuckers. That's what nuclear energy is. You have to have the fucking uranium-238 natural. No, it's not natural from the earth. Less than 1% is uranium-235.07. They have to fucking enrich it. They have to gas it. They have to centrifuge it. Oh, we're going to get hydrogen. No, no such fucking thing. A little SMR, no such thing. It's free money, wealth, and power to dominate. Because Price Anderson, they know they get the money up front. Stephen Bechtel on the fucking hill. Well, you were paid to put triple liners around fucking Hanford. And you didn't do it. He throws it right back at Congress. Well, that's your fault. You keep up in Price Anderson which is called the Immunity Act, Y-12, the Manhattan Project on Balco. 64% of all the Manhattan Project was Knoxville, Tennessee. Megan Rice knew all this. Megan Rice was a genius because she had that mentor, her mother, Madeline. You Google Madeline, you can't even find her now. Fucking scrub us all, fucking the anti-nuclear movement. Fucking that's their answer. Well, who fucking cancel culture? Hey, uh, fucking Lizzie Mills is a performance artist. What the fuck is Kevin Blanche? Megan Rice was awesome. We loved her. I loved her. Did the pandemic get her? No doubt in my mind. But we'll find out. Her mom was extremely active. I remember listening to her mom speak well into her 90s. Just go. It sure was fire. That's where this all began. Where all great movements begin. Washington Square, Lower Manhattan. <laughs> 1970s. The gay rights movement. Oh, right there. Alexander Hamilton. The only freaking true abolitionist. Kevin Camps calls himself an abolitionist, please. Right there. Every movement. <laughs> they lost the Battle of Freaking New York. Hamilton did. I was paramount on the restoration of Alexander Hamilton's tombstone. I used to have fits about it. My daughter says, Oh, your dream came true. You got your DNA back. It's like you assumed. You're related to Alexander Hamilton. Yep. DNA. And Abraham Lincoln. I'm a direct bloodline on my grandmother's side to both of them. I always knew that. Martyr yourself? People used to call me the modern day Rachel Carson. She was so awesome. So I'm not martyring myself for anyone. I'm going to stay in this fight as long as I can. Hopefully I make it to 91 like... Madeline did. I'll say this to plowshares. I support you. I support every one of you. You know, whether it be in Georgia, the submarines, whether it be a Y-12, whether it be in Kansas City, I helped write the answers to the judge at the Megan Rice potluck. With the first ordained Roman Catholic freaking bishop female, her and I. The lead nun, Sister Snow. Kevin Blanche. And don't kid yourself. They're, they're tough. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, mess with one of those. You must have been sent by God. Hmm. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? It's like we have to make a comeback. It's like that's who we have to be last night. I don't know if you listened to the game last night. Whoa. Now, that was a comeback. Oh, played horrible in the first half. Hmm. I lost, thought I lost it. I found it. Last night, I was outside right there where I was laying in the grass, right where I made my snow angel when I got to come home from the bone metal crowns. It'll be 10 years tomorrow. So I was given two months to live. I remember we had a snow day at the Senate scene. The sentencing of Megan Rice when Barack Obama put her in prison for life 
Timothy, Timothy, the greatest rant I ever heard in my life was Megan Rice inside that courtroom. We had a snow day, remember? Pete Seeger died that day. One of the true great peace actors. Pete Seeger died that day. These circles are important. The wind was blowing in last night. Shabazz Ravine, that great activist, Governor Olson's from Ogden, Utah, who fought Shabazz Ravine. The last indigenous people protected their rights. They, they lost, didn't they? The wind was blowing in. Even I was listening to, right as I was doing a prayer for Megan, I had the game going on the radio and I could hear it. Bottom of the night, two outs, it's one, nothing Giants. Boom! Even Giambi, who does the call, he never misses it. He's like, oh, dude, he, caught, he, he thought it was out. Everybody thought it was out. A big gust of wind blew in right as I was doing my prayer for Megan Rice. And it blew in that shot and held it in the yard. Baseball metaphors matter, asked Ken Burns. Where's Ken Burns on the nuclear thesis? Where's Ken Burns? They make this quirky documentary about Megan. They didn't even finish the story. They, why didn't they interview Kevin Blanche? I'm the guy that they leaked it from the penal system to me in Brooklyn when she was there. And I just happened to be there. Again, sent by God. I once walked down the road to the women's prison in Brooklyn. Tried to get in to talk to them. Of course, they're freaking not going to let me in anywhere. They're not going to touch me. I just do all their dirty work. Plowshares. How can we continue to go on with the same activism freaking way? I mean, same old results. We have lost the peace movement. We have lost every single battle. <laughs> Not in the nuclear energy. We have won. San Onofre, San Onofre is midway. You don't think that battle was midway. The battle of New York. Oh, no, it was midway. Waterloo. Huh. We shot Rothschild's freaking pigeon. He didn't get back to London. This is imperialism. Nuclear energy and nuclear bombs and nuclear are one in the same. Until you wake up and realize that. Where do we go from here? We, we make a comeback. Long live Megan Rice. Long live Madeline Rice. You want to scrub Madeline Rice from the internet? You want to start Dr. Rice? Everything that was ever started, including the post-ignorance project. Kevin Blanche was the predecessor to freaking Occupy. To the Million Mass March. To Black Lives Matter. Was started in Washington Square. Right under Dr. Rice's freaking classroom. You can deny my work. You can deny all our work. Long live. Huh. What got... Megan. We'll quote her again here at the end of this dissertation. This is for the anti-nuclear movement, the, the peace movement. This is for the peace movement. Christ-like, oh boy. Inside the courtroom, after all the expert witnesses, and the judge hammers her, Barack Obama hammers her. Holds her. And I like how the documentary and the Wikipedia page is written that they gave her three years. That's a total lie. They held her for three years in front of the trial without bail against the Constitution of the United States. She had bail. They labeled her as a terrorist. An 85-year-old that was labeled as a terrorist by Barack Obama and the freak show. They held her in a freaking holding facility for three years and tried to kill her before the trial. They did not let her out on bail. Timothy, she would call the prosecutor Timothy. I'm sitting right there. She's looking right at me. I'm from here to there from her. Timothy, thank you. I want to thank you, Timothy for putting an 85-year-old peace activist, the disciple of Dorothy Day, in a holding facility, built the hole for two weeks for three years, and turning down the temperature to 50 degrees and trying to kill me. Thank you. Thank you. For when I uh, get out, I have something else to protest. The human warehousing of human beings. You're evil. She went off. They gave her freaking life in prison. She got out under a pill. I'm the guy that started that freaking petition. I will again quote 
Sister Snow at the potluck in Knoxville, Tennessee. I almost got killed that night. The next night, a guy invited me to do a radio show in Knoxville, this psycho. I met a guy from Plowshares, born and raised. How I met that guy. He gave me a ride home to where I was staying in downtown Knoxville. What a pretty awesome. I'm already shaking thinking about it. This was a psycho case. He pulled a gun on me in his own house. So I snuck out the back door. I don't know how I got out of there. That Plowshares activist, the old man, had given me his phone number. I'm like, please, please let it work. My phone, I had an old shitty flip phone. I called and he answered. I says, I'm in danger. I'm out. Where are you at? Just give me a street sign, whatever. And you know how creepy it is out there. It's dark. It was creepy. I'm like, I'm walking down the road trying to hide from this dude. This guy's going to kill me. I know where you're at. There he was. I got in there. We drove home and it was a cold snowstorm in Knoxville, Tennessee. He says, Kevin, you stopped the vehicle in downtown Knoxville. He got out and he put his hands on my freaking head, my chemo bald head from the cancer. Kevin, just know one thing. We love you. You are so good. Everything you did. He put his hands on my head and he gave me a prayer and he gave me a blessing. He started to cry. So did I. Next morning, Pete Seeger died. Sentencing, they called the snow day. Because the judge was so moved by Megan Rice, Mary and Evelyn Tucker, the whole... They opened the court late so that we couldn't get in. They single filed us so that we couldn't get in. They tried every dirty trick. That's Barack, Barry Antoinette, Obama, and his identical twin, Trump. 85-year-old peace activist, the disciple of one of the greatest activists in the history of the world, Dorothy Day, who literally raised her right there in the shadow of the shirtwaist fire. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? How can you be for freaking the technology when the technology is the bomb? Not my words. You disagree with me, Kevin Blanche? You disagree. You Google the greatest genius in the world. You disagree with him. Long live Madeline Rice. We have to make a comeback in the peace movement. All the soldiers are coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan with cancer. They staged them at the Polygon in Afghanistan. That's the Russian freaking nuclear dump site. They sprayed white phosphorus over their womb went, depleted uranium, including Bo Biden, died of brain cancer. The general in Iraq, General O, the famous one, died of cancer. The same day Megan did, the day before. Megan Rice. They make the corky videos about her. They make the corky, goofy documentary video. They suck. They don't tell the whole story. Because they don't know the whole story. Because they've yeah, canceled culture. They've kettled Kevin Blanche because you can't handle the truth. <laughs> I've been deep in this freaking bone marrow fight from fucking birth. <laughs> oh, curses spike that I was ever born to set the hell. When did your activist and career start? The day my mom and dad met each other on the beach of San Onofre. That's when it started. My freaking path chiseled in stone before I was even born. Given two months to live. I have ML de Nuvo. Tomorrow will be the first person in the United States, maybe the world, to willingly, without a bone marrow transplant, survive ML de Nuvo OS with a marker this high. Something rotten in New Denmark. We have to freaking make a comeback. The wind was blowing in at Dodger Stadium. If you don't think baseball metaphors are culture, you know nothing. You know nothing. Ask Ken Burns. <laughs> New York Times interviews him. Where's the New York Times on Madeline Rice? I mean, the Post has a piece. Where's the New York Times on Madeline Rice when she went to prison? Huh. <laughs> it's pathetic. It's pathetic.
pathetic. The peace movement has to regroup. We have to come together. We have to be Christ like the real one. Not Jesus so I can so I can be rich. Not bomb and kill and maim. Anti-usury. The consumption paradigm that's going on in this country. We ignore it. The ships off the container, ships off the coast. Everything this consumption, the decadence of usury. We need to go into the temple with a figurative whip and tip over the tables, not with a literal one. We have to do this spiritually. Spiritually. That's our only hope. That's our only hope. These are sad times. Very sad. I've been very sad. <laughs> this election gets stolen in Japan. The anti-nuke party looked like they had it. You think the Japanese want freaking nuclear after Fukushima? No, they don't. But they get it shoved down their throat because the imperialists are running the world and they're nuclear monsters. Wealth and power, Price Anderson. We have to regroup. Born again. I said, how'd you survive? I'm in the 1% study. I used to be. They used to call me all the time. How'd you do it? I will quote again. Sister Snow. Well, I think you're sent by God, Kevin Blanche. Amen. Well, I walked through the valley of the shadow of death in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, in San Onofre in Diablo Canyon, in the Energy Solutions dump site at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, in Wendover, Utah, in Los Alamos, in Chicago, in Vienna, the IAEA. I fear no evil. Those angels that you murdered the angels that the nuclear industry crime syndicate, the radio roundup, these imperialists have killed so many. Including Annika, who Megan Rice lined me up with Annika. They watch out over me. Let's do the work. I made a lot of promises in that bone marrow transplant center. I was given no hope to live. None. To God, to myself. Hands up, no nukes. Hands up, no nukes. If God would give me a second chance, I promise to do the work every day the rest of my life. Hopefully I'll be like Madeline Rice. Long live Megan Rice's work. Long live Madeline Rice's work. Long live the peace movement, the anti-nuclear movement. Hmm. We've lost a lot of wars. We've lost a lot of battles. But this is the war of all wars against the imperialists, against the nuclear energy crime syndicate. We lost a lot of battles including the Y-12, Y-25. Megan was freaking educated as a kid. She knew her shit, where the belly of the beast was. Just never forget. You read the Wikipedia page, try to say she got sentenced to three years. It's a total lie. There was no sentencing. She spent three years in a holding facility. Barack Obama tried to kill her, literally. Turned down the freaking temperature. Trump? His twin. They gave her life in prison. At sentencing. She got out on a pill. Doesn't talk about that. Because it's ignorant. We don't finish any of these fights. Oh, I do. One more day, it'll be ten years. Kevin, you set us straight. You must have been sent by God. Amen.